was beautiful. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Are you ready to worship? I hope so. I am, and um, I, uh, I think we have a, a really good service planned for you today uh, for the Lord, and uh, we are, are here to, to honor and, and praise God and offer to Him the thanks and praise that He alone deserves. And um, our mission, uh, one way to, to praise God as we, as we leave this place, we can, we can praise and worship Him every day, is to fulfill our mission of following Jesus and sharing Him with others. And if we focus a little bit um, on that each day, uh, I think God would, would work in our lives and we would stay a lot closer to Him. If you would, please take a few moments to read through the announcements in the bulletin. We uh, have a, a lot going on, uh, but I encourage you to, to read those. Uh, we'd like to extend Christian sympathy to Miss Jane Smith and, and her family in the passing of her sister Nancy, um, as well as the family of Sally Connolly uh, as she passed away in Texas last week. Um, please keep them in your, your, your thoughts and prayers. This, uh, t- today, immediately after this service, we'll give you a chance to run to the restroom if you'd like, but we have a congregational meeting at 11.20 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, we want to give you some information, uh, very, very important information about our denomination, the United Methodist Church, and uh, some of the, the recent happenings with churches disaffiliating Uh, And we want to bring you up to speed. We're not going to take a vote. Today's purpose is to give you information. And uh, we'll explain a a good bit more of that at the meeting. But we would like for everyone to to stay for this very important meeting uh, in the life of of our church and of our denomination. Our New Testament Bible Challenge this week. uh, We're reading one chapter of the New Testament each weekday. We're on Matthew uh, still, chapters 26 uh, through, I don't think there's 30 chapters in Matthew, though. Uh, there's 28 <laughs> chapters in Matthew. Uh, we're going to read uh, the first couple in Luke as well. So uh, <laughs> somebody's trying to stump me. <laughs> they almost succeeded. Uh, our Snowbirds and Seagulls group is going strong. They've had wonderful crowds and some great programs at at, at their uh, meetings. And please read through those schedules. Those that have been coming have enjoyed some excellent food and and good fellowship. Uh, And many thanks to to Scott Bowen and his crew for leading that. They're doing a fine job. Uh, We are looking for additional ushers and greeters to to help on Sunday mornings. We are finding that uh, Sunday school is a bit of a a growing ministry as well. And so we're in the near future, we're going to be putting together a, a group of Sunday school ushers for folks who are, are coming and, and looking for a particular class. And so if, you're, if the Lord's leading you to maybe come a little early and be available for that, uh, it could really help our church, you know, grow and, uh, and, and develop. So uh, please be in prayer about that. Read through those uh, smiling faces to welcome others uh, portion of the announcements. Um, we had a great weekend uh, last week, uh, Missions Impact Weekend, Friday, Saturday, and, and Sunday had some very much heartwarming presentations from uh, various uh, missionaries, as well as um, a great sermon uh, from Reverend Kathy James from Epworth Children's Home. Did a fine job. We had 400 people here uh, in the room, and it felt really good last week, didn't it? And do you know how much was committed to missions? a hundred thousand dollars in one weekend Uh, i think that deserves some applause and celebration and more commitment cards will come in so that number is going to do nothing but climb and uh, and you gave even more than what was originally committed last year i think 101,000 was committed and you gave almost 130,000 so that is fantastic i am so proud to be your pastor and so um, I'm so excited about the good work that we're going to be able to do be, because of those commitments. And I, I think I gave you a challenge last week too, didn't I? That you could, you could push your pastor over the edge of a 17-story building if you, you beat last year's commitments. Well, it's not reported in the bulletin, but more commitments came in after this was printed. And you, you have succeeded in, uh, in, in meeting that challenge. And so... Uh, that's going to take place on Saturday, February the 25th at Avista Resort in, in North Myrtle Beach. We can give you some more information about that. Uh, my legs are kind of trembling as I, as I give that announcement. 
Uh, sometimes I can be a little too big for my britches, and I totally underestimated what you would do on the first Sunday. <laughs> but I, I'm thankful and proud and, and excited along with you. Uh, our children want to do a very special ministry next Sunday, immediately after church. They would like to host a, a luncheon for all of our, our church members who have, have lost spouses recently, all of our widows and widowers. They want to have a Valentine's Day luncheon. They're, they want to serve, and they, they've done this a few times, and I'm told they're, they're very excited about that. We would like to, to know if you plan on coming, so uh, drop us a note in the bulletin or, or email the church office. Um, uh, drop us a note in the offering plate or uh, email the church office this week and uh, let, let us know if you plan on coming so that they can be prepared for you. But that's, that's a, a good moment in, in our children's ministry, and they would appreciate you participating with that. Do we have any other announcements we need to cover? Very well. Let us briefly stand and welcome one another as we pass the peace and love of Christ. And to all of our friends joining us online, we wish you God's peace and love as well. Peace. Brother, thank you. Peace to you. <laughs> peace to you. Join in the singing of hymn number uh, 61, Come Thou Almighty King. Good morning. Good morning. At this time, let us affirm our faith with the timeless and priceless words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Yes, yes, definitely. My grandmother taught me that. You can't mix me out. <clears throat> anyway, the scripture reading for today is Matthew 9, 35, 38, and I'm reading from the uh, King James Version. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto the disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that ye will send forth laborers into his harvest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks today for waking in this great nation, the United States of America, a sovereign nation that protects its people and the people of this world from tyranny, a nation that protects its flock like the Good Shepherd, a nation founded on the principle of religious freedom, a freedom to worship you, Lord, and to gather without fear of oppression or persecution. For, Lord, you tell us not to fear. Do not be frightened, but in our hearts set apart as Christ our Lord. Lord, we pray for those that must hide their faith and covertly worship in your name with pending threats of imprisonment and death. Lord, we lift those with your word that even if we suffer for what is right, we are too blessed. Lord, we pray that you continue to empower those, giving them strength and perseverance to spread the good news, the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, to come together and hear your word and feel and see the movement of the Holy Spirit among us, that to encourage us and to kindle in us to be the spark that ignites a fire that flows not only in here, but outside of these four walls and into your world to those that are oppressed, those that do not know you and have not heard your word. Lord, turn our differences into similarities as we focus on you. Allow us to gaze through the lens of Christ and that not of human eyes. Lord, allow us to show the grace and compassion to others as you have shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask and we give thanks to the men and women of our armed forces that serve this nation so gallantly, and those that put themselves in harm's way for the protection of us and our democracy. Lord, we ask that you mitigate between nations at this time of war and threat of war, and settle these disputes. Lord, allow us to change those hammers and these weapons into plowshares and into pruning hooks. And Lord, at this time, we ask that the members of our congregation lift up those to you by name that are in need of prayer. Father God, we lift up those mentioned by name, those situations that they are facing. God, we lift those up to you that are sick and in need of healing. We lift up those that are weak, those that are tired, and those that are facing unknown trials and tribulations. Lord, allow those that are facing these hardships and the unknown to focus and to lean on you, Lord. Lord, we know that you are ever constant, always with us in our foundation. Lord, we may face these situations and sufferings in life, but with you and faith in you, that road leads to patience and persistence. And in the name that has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
At this time, we ask that those children that are going to Little Church head that way. And now we ask the ushers to come forth as we celebrate God's grace by returning God's tithes and the giving of our offering.
Let us pray. Father God, please take these gifts and multiply them for the goodness of your kingdom. Please plant the seeds where they need to be sowed. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing. I love to tell the story, Hymn 156. <laughs>
Please remain standing for our scripture lesson for the sermon from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. But even if you, if you should suffer for, for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Here's the key verse for the sermon today. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And he's talking about the hope in Jesus that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Friends, this is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. So as we've been saying regularly uh, for a while now, we want to establish a culture and, and a flow of a, of a current that, that every church needs. Spiritual growth through gathering, growing, giving, and going. Church needs to matter. Church needs to make a difference in our lives. It needs to be transformative. And so church, in order to be those things, requires some things of us, requires some effort, re requires some action. We want everyone in our church family to gather with us and truly strive to worship and honor God passionately. We would love for everyone that's part of our church family to be part of an ongoing class or, or group so that they can have the opportunity to grow in their faith. And yes, we can grow on our own, but we can grow so much more when we're part of a group that is praying and studying and, and, and together and, and, and supporting one another. We want to challenge all of our church family to give of our talents, our time, and our treasure for God's purposes, whether it's through the church or, or outside of the church. And uh, God's word commands us to go and share the good news of the love of Christ with others. And so at church, we're supposed to gather, we're supposed to grow, we're supposed to give, and we're supposed to go. And that is a recipe, gather, grow, give, and go. It's a recipe for personal transformation. It's a recipe for fulfilling God's purposes in our lives, and it is a recipe for a church to grow in the way that it's supposed to grow. You can say amen to that. Amen. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and now, you know, I've been here long enough to start getting, getting to know you, and you're starting to get to know me, and I, I, I've seen in you a, a, a really good handle on the first three, gathering, growing, and giving. You enjoy gathering for worship. Your worship numbers are, are starting to increase a little bit. A lot of us are, are, are part of a group, a, a study or a, a Sunday school class where we're connecting with others and, and growing and praying and, and studying together. You demonstrated all last year and, and even last Sunday that you're a giving church. You gave more last year to missions than you have in a long, long time, maybe more than, than ever, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but, but it was a lot. You finished the year with a surplus of $177,000 over our expenses. And on top of that, last week, you committed to give at least $101,000 for missions this year, and even more than that is going to come in. You're a giving church. You know, and uh, we're, we're pretty good at, at gathering, growing, and giving, and most of us are, are pretty good at, at the first part of going, and I, I believe going has, has two parts. We're supposed to go and share the love of Christ, 
And we're supposed to also share the good news of Christ. Most of you are really good at being generous and thoughtful and compassionate and kind to others. You, you, you're good at those things and, and you enjoy those things. But it's the other part of the going that is scary and more difficult. And that's sharing the good news of the life, death, and resurrection with Jesus. God commands us to share with others that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the Son of God who loves us and gave His life on the cross as an atoning sacrifice for the forgiveness of the sins and, and the redemption of all mankind. Amen. And Peter reminds us in his letter that we, we just read a few moments ago, always be prepared to give the reason for the hope that you have. Always be prepared. You know, and I like to call the uh, attention to the fact that Jesus started his earthly ministry and ended his earthly ministry saying the same thing. Have you ever thought about that? When Jesus first started to call his disciples together, he, he, he said, come and, and, and follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men, fishers of people. Come follow me and I will, I will teach you how to draw people to the Lord for their salvation. Come follow me and I will make you fishers of people. And right before Jesus ascended into heaven in the gospel of Matthew, the last chapter of Matthew, Matthew 28. <laughs> but Mark comes next, not Luke. Uh, Jesus gave the great commission. Go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And I will be with you to the end of the age. I think it's pretty important to Jesus that we go and, and tell others about him. We're called to be fishers of people. We're called to go and, and make disciples. He started and ended saying the same thing. It's one of the most important blessings and responsibilities that we have as being followers of Jesus. But, but for many of us, myself included, thoughts of evangelism or thoughts of going out and boldly sharing our faith brings up two big negative emotions. Guilt and fear. Guilt, because most of us know we could do a better job of it, do it more often and, and more intentionally. And then fear, because sometimes it can be awkward. Sometimes it can be risky. We... We don't know if they're going to reject what we say or not. We don't, we don't know if we're going to offend somebody. We, we don't know how they're going to respond. And so these, these negative feelings kind of dictate how often and when we have the courage to share our faith in Jesus with others. You know, but Jesus commands us to do it and so we should take that seriously and plus there are so many people who do not know the love and the forgiveness and the salvation of God they uh, they don't know the comfort they don't know the joy they don't know the assurance that can come through believing in Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and God wants to use us to get the word out God wants to use us to bring this salvation into people's lives. And if you've ever shared your faith with someone and, and you saw them believe, then, then you know the blessing, you know the thrill, you know the excitement and the fulfillment of doing that. And so because it can be a little scary and because we feel guilty and, and we're not, uh, we, we, we need a little motivation sometimes to share our faith, I'm going to give you some, some points today. I'm going to give you six points that might help you feel more comfortable in, in, in sharing your faith with others. And if you're a note taker, uh, you might want to write some of these down. And some of them are going to be very basic. Number one, pray daily for God to guide you and for other people to be receptive. You know, pray that you notice the receptiveness of, of others and that you take the appropriate opportunities to share with them. Ask the Lord each day, Lord, help me to be willing to share my faith. Lord, use me for your purposes. Lord, use me to draw other people to you. Help me to be brave and confident in you. So number one, pray and, and ask for God's blessing. Ask for God's help. Number two, 
friend of mine in high school recommended uh, doing this, and, 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 and I've always remembered it. He said, develop a top ten list of, of people that, that, that you need to pray for that you might be able to influence for the Lord. They might be in your family. They might be people in your neighborhood. They, they might be people that you work with or go to school with. Pray specifically for these people. As you encounter these people, try to be sensitive to the Lord's guidance as you interact with them. Seek the Spirit's guidance in, in what to say and how to say it. And remember, it doesn't depend on you, you or your skills or abilities. It depends on God's power and, and God's authority. Number three, read your Bibles and, and devotionals daily. If you want to have something to share, you're going to have to be nourished and filled with good things. And God's word and, and, and prayer and devotionals will bring you closer to God and will help you be much better prepared to share your faith with others. Number four, take a genuine personal interest in the, in the person that you would like to share with. A lot of times people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, so take some time to, to get to know them. Build some trust. Let them share with you. Let them feel safe and, and connected with you. And then a lot of times they'll be very open to what you might have to say about Jesus. Number five, this is a big one. This is, this is the one that, that might be the most crucial to uh, your saying yes when that moment comes, is that prepare to tell your story. Think about your faith story and write it out and even practice telling it. Not, not, not like a gimmick or an elevator speech, but a sincere telling of what God has done in your life. And you may think, well, my story is not very interesting. You know, I don't, I don't have the, the, the crazy transformation, you know, that, that a lot of people do. And, you know, your story is perfectly suited for the people that God's going to lead you to. And if your story is authentic, then it will speak. My story is not very exciting. I was taken to church from the day I was born, you know, and, and raised in the church. But my story has spoken to people. Because it's real, and, and, and your story will speak to people too. So, so think about how God has worked in your life to bring you to this point. Think about those moments when, when you first believed in Jesus as your Savior. And think about how you wouldn't trade that for the world. And other people need to know that. Number six, always be listening and, and watching for opportunities. You know, look for opportunities to, to get into conversations about God or, or look for, for little ways that you can sell subtle, subtly, uh, you know, the great things that are going on at church, something you learned recently, you know, uh, something that, that the church has done missionally. Um, you know, uh, sometimes sharing your faith is as simple as saying, hey, would you like to go to church with me? I'll come by and pick you up. Or would you, would you like to go to youth group or, 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 or this Snowbirds and seagulls function with us. That they're going to be talking about so and so and such and such on, on that day. You know, sometimes it's as simple as, as breaking the ice by inviting people. And other times it's, hey, can, can I share with you something about my faith? But, but you look for those moments of receptiveness. You don't necessarily have to force them. But so many times we, we talk ourselves out of, of taking that next courageous step of faith. And I believe that if we follow these six principles, these uh, six recommendations, then we'll be much better prepared and we'll be much more likely to share our faith when the opportunity arises. I remember uh, a youth director at one of my previous churches, I may have told you guys this story. I can't remember if I've said it in here or over there, but, um, or at this church or that other church, but uh, <laughs> sometimes. Our youth director was getting his hair cut one day and the barber was, was cutting his hair, and the, the barber shop had several people in it. There was a, a teenager in there kind of just listening to David talk. 
David was telling them about a, a youth mission trip that they had just done locally, how they had, you know, um, I forget what it was that they had done, but the, the kids were all excited about it. And, and the young man that was sitting was listening to David's conversation with the barber. And he said, where do you, where do you work at? What, what church do you work at? You know, sometimes just talking about the good things that God is doing around us will draw people to the Lord, and, and they will become receptive. But I'd like to end with, with a, a reading from Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the, pe- to the Christians at Rome, trying to encourage them to go and, and share the good news that they had just discovered with the, their Roman brothers and sisters around them. Paul asked the questions, but how are they to call on the one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone going to proclaim him? Talking about Jesus. And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of of those who bring the good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who go and bring the good news of Jesus to others. Let's go and let's bring the good news of Jesus to a world that needs to hear it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now are blessed to be able to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I invite you to take a hymnal and turn to page 12, please. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. I want to remind you, you don't have to be a member of this church to receive communion today. We believe that this is the Lord's table and that anyone who desires to have a closer relationship with him is welcome to his table. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us un one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. For those who will be assisting with serving communion, please come forward. you to come forward through the, the, the center aisles after the musicians and, and singers come um, and then you can return to your seats uh, through the side aisles.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for receiving us at your table. Lord, we are honored to be your invited guests. And we come as we are, but Lord, we realize that you send us forth as different people. When we fall short and when we sin, you forgive us, you redeem us, and you set us back on our feet with a better direction. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving yourself for us on the cross. And may we live to remember that and honor you for that. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And may we stand for the singing of hymn number 368, verses 1 and 4, My Hope is Built. We hope that you will stay and, and join us for the meeting. We will not take more than an hour, hopefully a good bit uh, less than that. We do have Child Watch available. Uh, five years and under will go to our nursery, and six years and older uh, will be upstairs in the little church room. If you could go and make sure they are situated, if, if you need Child Watch, we uh, invite you to do that th at this time. If, if you need to take a, a restroom break, uh, now is a good opportunity to do that, and we will get started with the meeting uh, as soon as, as we're ready, probably about uh, five or, or seven minutes or so. But as, as we leave this place, may we remember that we are the people of God and we are entrusted with the message of the good news of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we be faithful to share it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.